The most massive living things on Earth are the trees that surround us. Trees are important to people and wildlife in all kinds of ways, yet many of the most important tree species of Kentucky are not easily recognized by the untrained eye. Many people enjoy identifying trees during the summer when the broad-leafed trees are in full leaf cover. But nearly all of the trees native to Kentucky are deciduous and have no leaves for six months of the year. Tree ID during the dormant months can be just as challenging and rewarding as during the summer. Understanding the basic elements involved in tree ID will lead to a better appreciation of Kentucky's valuable resource of trees. Without the conspicuous leaves on deciduous trees, bark patterns, bud placement, arrangement and shape, and twig size will all be important to identify the tree. The most obvious characteristic of any tree is going to be the bark, which protects the tree from drying. It is at ground level, available during all seasons, and still available even after removed from the forest. Bark of each tree kind has its own pattern of cracks, ridges, and color. The limbs that hold the leaves during the summer months provide a tremendous aid in identification during other times of the year. The middle or center of the twig, when cut in half, is referred to as the pith. The shape and patterns found in this section of the twig provide clues to the identity of a tree species. On all twigs, some with closer observation than others, are found lenticels. These are small openings on the twig that provide aeration. These can provide some assistance in identifying several tree species native to Kentucky. Buds contain all of the next year's twigs, leaves, and flowers, all tucked away in individual packages. Each tree species has a rather unique bud when evaluating size, color, shape, and location. Those buds at the end of the twig are referred to as terminal buds and those laying along the side of the twigs are referred to as lateral buds. There are two arrangements of the buds and twigs found on hardwood trees, opposite and alternating. Both are very obvious when identifying hardwoods. When the leaf falls from the twig, remaining will be the leaf scar, the point where the leaf attached to the twig. Leaf scars vary greatly in size and shape, and close observation aids in identification. Note the location of the tree. Many tree species are very site specific. For instance, sycamore will be found growing very close to streams and rivers in Kentucky, and many of the oaks grow on the drier upper slopes. American beech is easily identified by the smooth gray bark it produces throughout its entire life. The twigs of beech are gray in color and have buds arranged in an alternating pattern. Each bud is reddish brown in color and referred to as cigar shaped, approximately one inch or more in length. The wood of the black walnut tree is very valuable. The bark as well as the wood of the black walnut is very dark brown or chocolate color. The bark is deeply split. By rubbing or taking a pocket knife to the surface of the bark, you can detect the deep chocolate color. The gray colored buds lay close to the stout twigs, and below each lateral bud will be seen a few very obvious leaf scars where the leaf fell during the previous fall. The scar is rather large and looks somewhat like the face of a monkey. An additional aid in identifying black walnut is the pith of the twig. With a pocket knife, Carefully cut midway along the axis of the twig to expose the chambered pith. Most tree pith are solid. There are many species of hickories in Kentucky, but most have similar characteristics. The bark is gray, furrowed, and in several cases, interlaced. The most obvious member of the hickories is the shag bark, the name coming from the very large plates that separate from the tree and remain attached. The buds on hickories are normally one half to one inch in length, growing on stout twigs. And the most obvious characteristic of the buds are the persistent scales that give the appearance of the buds peeling. The leaf scars at the base of the buds on the hickories are obvious to the naked eye. The 
The bark of sweet birch is dark brown to black and is smooth on the younger stems, finally breaking into plates on older stems. The twigs are brown to black that have very conspicuous spur shoots, approximately one inch on the older stems. These spurs are where the leaves are attached during the growing season. Noted on the twigs will be very obvious lenticels, very conspicuous on the sweet birch. The buds are small, a quarter of an inch, very pointed, and laying along the twig in an alternating pattern. Sweet birch also has a winter green oil in its bark, giving the twig an obvious winter green taste and smell. Oak trees are very prominent and widely distributed throughout the United States. Red and white oaks are very important to the wood industry. And because of the large number and variety of oaks, identifying individual species in the leaf off condition can be very confusing. But identifying the genus of oak is obvious. The twigs are usually found to be stout on the oaks with the lateral buds in an alternating pattern. And oaks tend to have multiple bud clusters at the end of the twig. The buds are usually less than a half inch long. The bark of the white oak group will be white in color and furrowed. The red oak group will have bark that is also furrowed, but usually dark gray to black. The bark of the northern red oak tends to be unique. On the top of the furrowed dark bark will be found white plates that will follow the vertical lines of the bark pattern. The white oak bark is a very light, almost white. Yellow poplar trees are usually found growing in old field areas, many times dominating the site. This tree is easy to identify in the winter months due to the very tall, straight trunk that is clear of branches for a considerable distance above the ground. The bark of the large trees are gray and furrowed. At the base of the furrows, you will find white, chalky color. The terminal bud on the yellow poplar easily helps in ID. The bud is approximately a half inch in length and flattened and referred to as a duck's bill. The lateral buds are much smaller in size. Noted at these lateral buds is a scar that encircles the entire twig. The cucumber tree is often confused with its close relative, the yellow poplar. Comparing the bark of the cucumber tree and yellow poplar, it will be seen that the cucumber tree has flaky ridges. The bark is usually darker brown and lacking the white caulking at the base of the splits in the bark found on the yellow poplar. The buds of the two trees should also aid in making positive ID of the cucumber tree. The cucumber tree has a terminal bud that is approximately one inch, silvery white, silky, and hairy. Sweet gum trees are usually found growing in moister areas. The bark of the tree is gray to brown and deeply furrowed with narrow ridges. The twigs hold a short pointed bud approximately a half inch long, which is reddish in color. Corky wings will be found growing on older twigs. As mentioned before, sycamore trees are found close to water. The majority of the streams of Kentucky will have a large population of this species. The bark is the most distinguishable characteristic of the tree. From a considerable distance, the tree's flaking outer brown bark will give way to the almost pure white inner bark. Normally, the base of the tree has the characteristic brown with the upper two-thirds of the tree being white. The twigs have a very distinct zigzagging shape with an alternating bud pattern. Look closely at the bud. You can see that the leaf scar almost encircles the bud. During the growing season, the bud is almost impossible to see because of the encircling of the leaf base. In many situations, the black locust does not attain a large diameter and develops a poor shape. The bark is a light gray to dark brown with a zigzagging interlacing pattern. The bark is slightly furrowed. The twigs are found to also be very zigzagged. At each of the turns in the twig can be found a very small inconspicuous bud. Surrounding each bud is a pair of thorns, a characteristic of this species that is obvious to anyone attempting to walk through a young stand of black locust. The wood of black locust has been used extensively for fence posts because of its resistance to rot. Honey locust is a very close relative of the black locust and has many of the similar characteristics of bark, zigzagging twigs, and small inconspicuous buds. 
The one item that makes identification obvious on the honey locust is the large clustered groups of thorns arming the entire stem. The twigs also are found to have the thorns, all growing to be three inches in length. Maples are very common and grow in a wide variety of site conditions. All of them have opposite branching and buds. Maples are one of a few tree species that naturally grow in Kentucky with opposite branching patterns. The lateral buds are considerably smaller than the terminal bud, and the bark on the maples is gray with furrows and when mature develops scaly plates. The box elder, a member of the maple family that grows along streams, has a characteristic that makes it very easy to recognize at any age. The last three feet of any one twig changes color from light brown to very green. The color near the very ends of the twigs on the red maple are very reddish in color. The buds and branching of the buckeye tree are opposite. When looking at the limbs of the buckeye, you will note that they tend to be less in number and stouter than other species. The lateral buds will be much smaller than the terminal bud, which is nearly one inch long. The bark of the buckeye will be thin with large scaly plates forming on the mature stems. Although the dogwood is not an important commercial timber species, it is usually found in close association with other hardwood species of Kentucky's forests. Dogwood also has opposite branching of twigs and buds. The bark, dark brown to black in color, forms small squarish blocks. The buds are in opposite arrangement, being only a quarter of an inch in length and purple. The terminal bud, light gray to almost white, is a flower bud that produces the large four-petaled flower that opens early in the spring. The ends of the branches of the dogwood tend to turn upwards. Ash occurs in deep, fertile soils and is very valuable for its wood in manufacturing. This species has one of the six opposite branched patterns of trees native to Kentucky. The bark is ash gray in color and has a very definite diamond shaped pattern in its furrowed bark. The twigs are stout with opposite branching of the twigs and buds. The terminal bud is much larger than the lateral buds and the first pair of lateral buds are at the same level as the terminal bud. Native hardwood trees of Kentucky are extremely valuable. The identification of these trees will help in your appreciation of and the management of this renewable resource.